Welcome back. So President Donald Trump has frequently left observers baffled by his foreign policy moves, but as he touches down in Japan for a crucial G20 meeting, my next guest says it would be a mistake to underestimate him. Joining me now is Niall Ferguson, senior fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University, and he's also uh, an author. All right, so Niall, thank you so very much. Uh, for joining us today. You know, the last time you and I spoke, it was in South Africa, and it was just as Donald Trump was elected president. And you basically called a strong economy, strong markets, stimulus within the market as well. And you also were talking about trade wars. I mean, looking on a few years later, has anything surprised you over the last few years in terms of what we've seen from President Trump? Well, I don't think anybody could claim not to be surprised by President Trump. It's uh, really his speciality to surprise commentators. But as you said, my expectations at the outset of the Trump administration have roughly been met. Uh, those people who predicted a stock market catastrophe on the yeah. evening of the election, uh, like Paul Krugman, looked pretty foolish by about 11 a.m. on November 9th, uh, 2016. There has been fiscal stimulus, though the Keynesians hate to admit it. That's exactly what's come out of the administration. But I think the really striking feature is that it took uh, President Trump about a year, maybe more than a year, really, to get his, his Chinese policy figured out. And the trade war, the use of tariffs as a lever to try to change uh, Beijing's behavior, that only began uh, last year. Uh, so it was a little bit of a delayed action. But I, th I think it's become the defining feature of Trump's presidency, the thing that future historians will write about, maybe rather more than today's journalists. He has fundamentally altered the direction of U.S. foreign policy, particularly with respect to China, but also, I think, with respect to the Middle East. Most people, and I guess probably the majority of contributors to CNN, tend to emphasize the president's many weaknesses, and I don't dispute those, and I'm not here to defend his personality or his conduct in all kinds of respects. But if you ask the question, is this a substantive presidency in terms of foreign policy outcomes, then I think you have to concede that it has been so far. I, 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 it's interesting you say that, but at the end of the day, you're seeing this trade war or the, the trade debate that is ongoing having a detrimental impact on the, the economies that have been stuck in the middle of it all. It's created uncertainty within the emerging market space. Many say it's a power play about just asserting the strength of the U.S. on the international stage. And you've got this delay in negotiations. It's a lot of to and froing. There's no real you know, drive to try and find a resolution. Is this just a power play, do you think, Niall? Well, power is important, uh, and one shouldn't lose sight of the fact that in many ways it's the most important thing. The alternative strategy, which is really what the Obama administration had uh, ended up with, was just to acquiesce in China's rise to be number one, not only economically, but geopolitically. You can be a free trader, as I am, and still see the rationale of using tariffs to try to rein China in, to try to change its behavior, to stop it engaging uh, in the theft of intellectual property, to try to alter the way in which it essentially breaks World Trade Organization rules with subsidies to state-owned enterprises. Think, I could go on. We'll so I think the key here China is... Will we be able to change China's ways? I mean, for a very long time, before this trade war, people were saying China is becoming very strong. It's, it, you know, it's intervening in its currency. We don't trust its data. Is this the right way to approach China? Well, it's not. Uh, it's, it seems to me as if there aren't many other ways to get the attention of policymakers in Beijing. And you can't deny that President Trump's achieved that. Here we are on the eve of G20 in Osaka, and it's President Xi who has to come up with proposals to try and restart the trade negotiations. The Chinese are extremely worried that this is going to be another non-event where there really won't be anything agreed. And President Trump is continuing to threaten to raise tariffs on the remaining Chinese imports to the U.S., which haven't yet been tariffed. So there's no question that he's got China's attention, and we know that some of the concessions that have been made by the Chinese negotiators in the course of the past year are meaningful. They're going to significantly increase, for example, their imports from the United States to reduce the bilateral trade deficit. And I think there will be meaningful changes. Uh, there will have to be meaningful changes, not only in terms of intellectual property rights, but also in terms of the Made yeah. in China 2025 strategy. So I think you can't deny that this is a much more effective approach to the China challenge than 
we've seen from previous administrations, not only the Obama administration, but the Bush administration before. Very quickly, because we're running out of time, and I have to ask you this question. You had said to me that President Trump has basically captured the, 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 you know, the bad mood um, and the ugly mood of Americans. We're heading up to re-election. We're heading up to the elections. Is he going to get re-elected? What do you think is going to happen? Can Democrats go up a Trump go against a Trump economy and fight against that? I think the economy is not going to be growing, growing as strongly this time next year as it is now, but I'd be surprised if it was in recession. Having listened to the Democratic contenders, or at least the first half of the Democratic field last night, I was struck by how far they implicitly agreed with Trump's policy in China. There was no criticism of his China policy. There was even some acceptance that his Iran policy might be going in the right direction in the sense that he has uh, walked away from the nuclear deal uh, that Obama negotiated. And uh, there weren't that many uh, people lining up to defend uh, entirely the Obama Trade, uh, deal with Iran. So I, I think when I listen to the Democrats, I'm not seeing anybody who's really going to be able to land a punch on Trump if the economy is still growing and if his foreign policy agenda is still delivering. Niall, what a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so very much for joining us. Great to speak to you again. I appreciate your time.